All right, so this is our third video in uh, this problem to calculate the answer to C. So once again, a ball is thrown upwards near the edge of a 300 meter high building with a velocity of 20 meters per second. We're assuming no air resistance. Uh, for A, we calculated the time the ball is traveling upwards is 2.0 seconds. For B, the maximum height above the ground, we calculated that to be 320. And now we're going to handle C. So just to note, we don't need any of the previous calculation information to do part C. Everything we can do, uh, we can calculate C with, uh, with everything that we're given in the problem. So I'm going to write that down once again, our initial displacement, 300 meters, initial velocity, upwards of 20 meters per second. Acceleration is acting downwards, negative 9.81 meters per second squared. That's uh, negative because it's going down. Our final position in this problem is 65 meters above the ground. So remember that everything we're measuring in terms of our position is, ref is relative to ground. So ground would be zero. So if this ball landed on the ground, my final position, my final displacement there would be zero meters. And do we need anything else? We're trying to calculate, yeah, there's my question mark. Okay. So the best equation that fits all of these variables will be Vf squared equals the initial squared plus 2 times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. It's very important to remember that displacement is just kind of a shortcut for writing your final position minus your starting position. You can't just put 65 in there for that, for that D for your displacement and call it a day and calculate it. You're not going to get the right answer. You'll probably end up getting a, having to take a square root of a negative or your answer will physical sense because this ball goes up and comes back down and speeds up the entire way on the way down. So I'm just going to rewrite this formula with the, uh, instead of D, I will write my final position, subtract my initial. And that'll make the math work out in sense with the physics. So finals that we're solving for, I'll leave that there. Initial is 20. Uh, 2 times negative 9.81, and here we go. So we, final position 65 started at 300. So that displacement is going to subtract to be a negative. That negative will multiply our acceleration to be a negative, making the whole thing positive. We won't have any problems taking square roots later on. We have squared equals 20 squared is 400. And then I'll work this out to be a positive 4610.7 if you want. So once again, inside of the brackets here, worked out to be negative 235. That negative 235 multiplied by the negative 9.81 gave us a positive, and then double that at the end to give us our 4610.7. Add both of those together. And we get 510.7, square root both sides, and remember that in physics our answer could be the positive or the negative, or maybe we'll need both of those solutions after taking a square root. So in physics we have to take the answer that makes the sense, most sense for the problem, and if that's both answers, then so be it. So, hitting the square root button yields 71 meters per second, positive or negative. If you're going to leave your answer as positive or negative, it better apply to the situation. Now, in this case, the object is going downward, so we reject the positive answer. So our final answer for this is negative 71 meters per second. This problem asks for velocity. We have to take into account the direction, and so the negative sign makes it uh, clear that it's a downward direction.